set themselves and rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords uh, from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall He speak unto them in His wrath and vex them in His sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the inheritance for my or give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, the utmost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Tonight, I kind of did a, a little bit of a, a play on things on that verse number one. It says, why did the heathen rage? And so I, for the title I have, why does the virus rage? And we know that the questions on everybody's hearts in this world that we're living in and the things that are going on, People are asking, why is all these things happening? Why are these shutdowns going on? Why are things changing and stuff going on? And obviously we understand in a sense of what that is. And we understand that we are in the last days and maybe even the last of the last days. And that all of these things are preparing for Jesus to come back. And so the question is, always been asked, has it not been asked by people, why does good things happen? Why does bad things happen to good people? And I guess the other way around as well. But why do, why do things happen? Why, why are things happening uh, to people that are good and it seems undeserving? And, uh, but you know, the Bible tells us it rains on the just and the unjust. We know that it doesn't really uh, pick favorites. And when a tornado comes through, it sometimes gets just people as well. And uh, car wrecks happen to good people. And uh, cancer happens to good people, and sickness happens to all of us. We're all going to die. We're all we're all fallible in that sense, and that we all have an appointed time. But Psalm chapter number one kind of contrasts the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked, and, and encourages us to live the right way. And uh, as we live in these days, when a virus seems to rage and problems seem to rage in our day, the Bible gives us this warning to choose the way that we should live. And sadly, our nation, and not just our nation, but the world, is turning away or has already turned away from God and the things of God. And our nation is, is turning away from the things that are right. And you older folks here can remember the days when they used to say prayers in public events and, and it was okay. Prayers in national events and presidents would lead things like that. And now today, if a president does that, which our president has at times, people have national outcries and revolts against God even being mentioned and God being lifted up. We ask this question then in light of all that, why does things like this rage? Why do the heathen rage? Why are these things happening? I'm going to give you some thoughts here, but before I do, let me just say this one little phrase. Repentance is needed. Amen. Repentance is needed by you and me and all of us here. But repentance is definitely needed by our nation. And repentance Amen. is needed in the world. So I encourage you in that. But number one, let's look at verse number one. We see the heathen raging. Why do the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. If you turn on the news tonight when you get home, you know what you'll see? You'll see the heathen raging. Right? Uh, and, and they just get on there and they... And they talk about this and that and they have no spiritual guidance and no acceptance of the things of God and their raging is in rebellion to God. They're against the things of God many times. The Bible says, but the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. Have you ever been down to the ocean when the tide's rolling in and it's after a storm and you see all of that silt and things being thrown up and being cast around? That's somewhat like the heathen raging in the day. What a question. What a question. And then it says, they imagine a vain thing. They imagine a vain thing. 
you know, imagine is maybe not quite like what, the way you would. I started to say imagine it, but I guess that. But it's not quite the the sense that we think of. Imagine here means to meditate, or even even to mutter to yourself. Anybody here like me that kind of mutter around to yourself? You just talk to yourself and you, you get upset and so you don't want to say it out loud so you just say it you know, under yourself. That's what this is, the idea here. Why do people rage and the people imagine or mutter to themselves or meditate on vanity? Why do people meditate on things that are vain? You ever been guilty of that? I think we all have. But we could sum it up as empty meditations, worthless things. The Bible says that is our world that we live in. The Bible says the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing. We ask that question, but I think we know the answer. Because they're without God. They're without Christ. And tonight, we see the heathen raging. But second of all, we see the heart's rebellion. Verse number 2 says, The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together. What? Against the Lord. Doesn't doesn't take much to think that that doesn't sound a lot like our world today. They're meeting and they're taking counsel against the things of God. The world says, don't bind me with rules. Don't bind me with all the things. Don't, don't even judge me for anything. Everything's okay. Go any direction you want. And there's rebellion in the heart of mankind. I, I've heard many people say, well, I'm just following my heart. I'm following the direction of my heart. Well, the Bible says our heart is desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. And people are following their heart and it's leading them astray. And against God and against the Bible. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You know, many times people say, I, I don't want to be followed by God. I don't want to be led by the things of God. And rebellion in the heart leads people away. And it sends destruction and violence. All through the Bible we find God having to punish His people. And having to send punishment to get people's attention. And I believe many of the things that we're dealing with in our world is maybe our last chance to try to get attention of the things of God. To put that into man's hearts once again. The things of God. Tonight, we see... That God is working in the hearts of man. We see that that rebellion is in the heart of those that are around us. So then, then I see number three. We see heaven's retribution. In verse number four it says, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. My, how we find that God, God, the Bible says God will laugh. And this is kind of a, you ever laughed at something but you didn't find it really funny? I know I do, I do that sometimes. You just kind of laugh because you're trying not to cry. You're looking at this, can you imagine the Lord looking at all these puffed up people in the world? Thinking they've got it all together and he just laughs. He just, it's kind of that shaking your head like, what do they think? What kind of direction are they thinking they're going? In all of those things. God will laugh. And it's kind of a. Almost a. With contempt. But this word derision. Just kind of means to make fun of. The Bible says in Psalm 59. O Lord. Shall laugh at them. And he shall make all the heathen in derision. <laughs> you know. The Bible says here that the anger of the Lord. Was mentioned in verse number 4. He that sitteth in the... Ha I'm sorry, verse number 5. He that sitteth... Well, I'll read 4 and 5. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. That anger of the Lord, there is that sore displeasure that's mentioned there. You know, I don't know about you, but I want to please the Lord with my life. I want Him to be pleased with me. But many people in our world, that doesn't even cross their mind. They don't even think twice about pleasing the Lord in their life. You know, and He's going to trouble the world because of that. And that's what this means here, this vex. I was interested when I was reading about vex. We don't, 
Some of you older folks will remember when that was a regular word in the, the vocabulary, when people would talk about being vexed. We don't, we don't use that as much. I, I think they have more trendy words today, but the word vex is an uh, interesting word. I was researching it. It was interesting to find out what all it meant. When he said vex him in his sore displeasure, there's a lot of things that that says. One of the things that it says is that it means to disturb. It means to alarm. It means to terrify, to hurry, to be anxious, to be afraid, to be nervous. And if that does not describe what's going on in our world today, I don't know what does. As I find more people being nervous and disturbed and shook up and frustrated in our world. And I believe that the wrath of God as it falls, it, it causes people to be vexed. It causes people to be disturbed. And guess what? That's exactly what God wants to do. How many times people said, well, I went to church, but I don't want to go back because I was so, that preacher made me nervous. He, he, my heart was all upset. And I, I, they had that invitation and I just felt so jittery during that. You know what that is? That's the Lord vexing your heart and coming by your way and saying, you ought to get right with God. You ought to surrender to me. You ought to quit doing those things. You ought to change your life. You ought to get right with God. That's what that's going on, in case you didn't know. And it'll feel a whole lot better if you just surrender to the Lord. He will vex you, drive you back, because that's all trying to get your attention. And when God vexes in His sore displeasure, it's not because He doesn't like us. It's because He wants us to be right. He wants us to surrender. God will work on and work in our hearts trying to draw us back to Him. But look at verse number 6. I say we have a holiness that's reigning. It says, Yet have I set up my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. I say in the midst of all the world that we're living in, it's another reminder in the midst of this chapter of who's in charge. Who's on the throne. Who's got everything in his hands and in control. Tonight, the Lord is reigning. And he is a holy God. As Isaiah stood before him and realized in that dream, he said, they, they, the, the angels and the seraphims were saying, holy, holy, holy. And Isaiah was like, I'm unclean. Because he realized what a holy God was before him. God is a God of holiness. And as a Christian, we ought to respect that in our living. We, holiness just simply means to be apart, to be sacred, to be separate. And those are descriptions of God. That He is a holy and wonderful God. And the Bible says He sets His Son on high. His Son is on the throne. This God is all, all worth, worth worshiping. And today, we, when we stand before Him, we stand before a holy God. You say, why should I come to a drive-in service and have this time? Because it's a holy God. And He is worth worshiping. He's worth spending the time. He's worth spending the, the effort to worship Him in spirit and truth. He's a holy and wonderful God. May, may we worship Him tonight in that spirit of holiness. But here's the thing. We live in a day when you say, why do the heathen rage? Why do the bad things take over? Why do we all have to experience these difficult times? Why, why is it all going on? Why? Well, God is dealing with this world. Look at verse number 8. We see the heavy rule from God. That's number 5. We see, He says, Ask of me and I shall give the heathen for thine inheritance. Verse 9 says, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. God in His holiness he deals with rebellion. He may show great patience. And can I, I'll say this with all sincerity. I believe God has been very patient with America. Man, we have had more patience than we deserve. He's been more patient with you than you deserve. God is a God that's full of patience. But He will deal with that sin. The Bible says, be sure your sin will find you out. You can hide it. You can keep it away. You can, you can think you're getting away with it. But God knows every bit of that. And the same is in our world. We, our nation lives like we can do anything and keep sinning against God, keep turning against God. But God is patient only for so long. As God's patience, I believe, is running out with our world. And just like this clay pot shatters, 
Can you imagine if I went to God and said, God, I have an idea for you. I've been making this clay, you fill in the blank, a clay pot. And I have made this for you, God. And I think it's probably the best creation you've ever seen. Can you imagine what, how God would look at that again, shaking his head in derision? And it just shatters. There's nothing to it. And that's about what our works are and all the things that we try to do to think that we're going to appease God with something. Now, I believe we ought to serve Him. We ought to live for Him. We ought to love Him. But today, all that we bring, the, our best is filthy rags, the Bible says. The best you've got to offer is not much in the sight of God. And today, we need to stop trying to appease Him and go with what verse 10 says. Verse 10 says, Be wise and be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. You want to get past all of that? Be wise and be instructed. Now I don't know about where you want to get your wisdom from and how you want to get your instruction, but I would recommend to you the Bible that you're holding in your lap is a good place to get wisdom and instruction. Turn off Facebook, turn off the news for a while and open the Bible. And it will give you more instruction and more words than all of that mess put together. God's Word is the answer. And be wise just means to be walking circumspectly. You know, <laughs> I just defined an easy word, wise, with the hard word, circumspectly. Uh, so we've, now I've got to define my definition. So wisdom here means to walk circumspectly. But walk circumspectly means to walk with awareness. It means to walk knowing what's going on around you. Okay? If we know what's going on, this Bible gives us a, a way to walk knowing what's going on. When you watch the news and you watch them going, Oh, the end of the world. You can go, Hey, we already knew that was happening. Jesus is coming back. We, we can walk circumspectly in our day. We can walk with confidence. And we can walk knowing. So where does that wisdom come though? It comes from the Word of God. It comes from the Bible. Be prudent in these, these things. The Bible says, He that handleth the matter wisely shall find good. So wisdom will help us to do that. Whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Never going to find happiness trusting in yourself. Never going to find happiness trusting in what you can do. Yep. Trust in the Lord. We are seeing the power of God on display in these days. The world doesn't see it, but you and I, because we know. I love to see, I feel like I'm seeing New Testament prophecies coming to pass every time I, I see things because I know the Word of God. And I know what God said. And we can rejoice during these days. And we can have confidence that God is working His plan. You say, why, why do all these things happen? Well, we know from the Word of God, the wisdom that the Word of God gives us, that there's truth in that. And He challenges the leaders of this world. Kings, that means the presidents, the leaders, listen up. Judges of the earth, listen up. Be wise. Well, I need to study my law books more. No, study the Word of God. Follow the Word of God. Then we see in verse number 11, a happy reverence. The Bible says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. So, it's a happy reverence. You can be joyful and reverent. You don't have to be... You know, a lot of times people think reverence is, is this. Yes, Master. Hit me with the whip again, Master, and I'll endure it because I'm reverent. Baloney. You can have a happy reverence, and this verse tells us that. Serve the Lord with fear, rejoice with trembling. There's reverence. And there's rejoicing. All in the same things. Nothing like being right with God gives you rejoicing. Gives you a spirit of that. And the best time you can find to be right with God is right now. In the midst of shutdown. In the midst of things not where we like it. Being right with God is of utmost importance. Of walking with God. And you know, serve the Lord with gladness the Bible says. <laughs> we ought to serve Him. With gladness in our heart. But it starts with fear. You notice that? Verse number 10 or verse number 11. Serve the Lord with fear. With fear. Now, this is not a fear 
that says, you know, I've got a, we've got some cats in our house that if you so much as go like this at them, man, they cower and run. <laughs> because they have just out and out fear that they're going to get walloped, right? Well, that's not the fear we're talking about here. But we ought to have fear. What's the fear here? It's a respect kind of fear. You respect that. It's a reverence again. And it's a piety. It's a serving God. It's fear because you revere. That even rhymes. So you ought to be able to remember that. I have fear because I revere the Lord. I have fear in my heart because I revere Him. And I trust Him. I'm going to reverence Him with all of my being. When His Word says do it, when, when the direction says do it, I do it because I reverence that in my life. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Fear is, again, just this reverence. And boy, we need to bring back a reverence to God. This, you notice it says with trembling. You know, it just is a sense of knowing who you're dealing with. Right? Now, I don't tremble when I meet people much, but I, I will tell you, I remember when I, I got to walk in, got to go to the White House, not the White House, but to the to Washington, D.C., and uh, I got to walk into some very, I could call their names, but I won't for now, but I got to walk into some pretty important people's office and visit with them and talk with them. And I was a little sweaty, and my hands were real trembly and moist, and I, I was nervous and scared I was going to say the wrong thing. You know why? Because I knew who I was dealing with. These were important people in the world. I had that sense. That's the same thing when we're talking about God. That we know who we're dealing with. We have a trembling a little bit because we're dealing with a holy God that has the power to do whatever He wants. And that brings a reverence. That brings a little bit of fear. The God that created this universe is the one we're praying to. The God that created everything is who we're dealing with. The God who is so big that... He can change the whole course of the world with just a, a word. He's the God that when He spoke, people fell back on the ground. That's the God we're dealing with. Today, we ought to have a reverence in our heart for that during these days. May God bring back a holy reverence for His house and a holy reverence for His temple because you are the temple. May God, we have a reverence in our temple for Him. Let me give you... The last thing, and it's kind of a repeat of what I've emphasized, but verse 12 gives us again. It's the hearing and receiving. Hearing and receiving. It says, kiss the son lest he be angry. He perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. You know, I think this verse pretty much fits the days we're in to a T. The Son, there is Jesus Christ. It says, Kiss the Son, lest He be angry, and ye perish from the way, when His wrath is kindled but a little. <laughs> it doesn't take much. The Lord just gets a little bit, and things happen. His power is so great. But the Bible says, Blessed are all they that put their trust in Him. The Bible says, Happy is the man whom God corrected. Therefore, despise not the chastening of the Almighty. Can I say to you as a believer and as a Christian, in the days that we live, we live in these un unusual and unprecedented times in our lifetime. So you know what? We ought to despise the chastening of the Almighty. During these days when this is going on, we need to realize that this is God. God's got everything in control. And we're not going to despise these days. We're not going to get down on these days, we're going to realize that we're just going to say, man, Lord, get us right or take us home. I want to see the Lord send a revival. Amen. We pray every Saturday with a group of preachers and we pray for revival. Revival in East Texas. And I've been realizing this is a chance at revival. This is a chance that God could do something during these days. 
Man, blessed are they that put their trust in Him. If we'll put all of our trust in Him during these days, we can be victorious in the midst of the virus raging. In the midst of the world that seems to have gone mad, we can have a joy about our heart. Blessed are they that keep His testimonies and that seek Him with their whole heart, the Bible says. And I say this to you tonight. The Bible says where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Do we have a vision? Do we have a vision to still reach this world? Do we have a vision to serve God during these days? That God help us to have that kind of vision. Notice in this, last of this verse, it says, Blessed are they that put their trust in Him. That word trust means a refuge. Basically, you're seeking protection from God. <laughs> I like that. We ought to be putting our trust in the Lord during these days. Amen. Lord, I'm going to try to be as safe as I can. But ultimately, I'm going to put my trust wholly in you. I'm going to trust the Lord. You're my protection. I mean, and, and, and I don't know about you, but I believe the Lord is a lot better than hand sanitizer. And the Lord's a whole lot better than a mask. Not against either one of those. I think my skin's falling off from all the hand sanitizer I've put on. But I will tell you, we ought to put our trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Put our trust in Him because He's worth trusting tonight. The Bible says, He shall cover thee with His feathers. And under His wings shall thou trust. And thy, His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And tonight we have the truth of the Word of God. Let it be your shield. You say, well, I don't understand why this virus is raging. But here's my trust. I'm putting up my shield. And Lord, you cover me. You shelter me with your wonderful shelter. The Lord's hand is not slack today. In these last days, you think the Lord's gotten any weaker? Oh no. He's getting ready to show His almighty power to this world. And we need to trust in Him. You know, the Bible says as many as received Him to them gave He power. <laughs> you say, how do I get power during these days? We trust in Him. We lean on Him. And if you're not saved tonight, trust in the Lord. Amen. Lean on Him. Ask Him into your heart. Because He's the one that makes the difference in our life. He's the one that will save us. The rest of that verse says, As many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, the daughters of God, the children of God. Even to them that believe on His name. Tonight we need to trust in Him. Some trust in chariots. Some trust in this. Some trust in that. But I'm going to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm going to lean on Him. I'm going to follow Him. I'm going to trust in the things of God. And tonight, you say, well, I don't know why all of this is going on. I don't think any of us do. I think all of us look at this world and just, we shake our heads and say, I, I don't know what can be done. And I don't know that there is anything that can be done. But I can deal with me. I can encourage you. And we can stand for God in these days. In the days when the kings and the people of the earth are turning away and the things of the works of this earth are just broken into pieces. I just remember about two months ago, our president was standing up saying, the stock market is better than it's ever been before. Broken into pieces. The Lord looks and just shakes his head in derision and says, all the works of man can be taken away just like that. But our chapter closes out, blessed is he, trust in the Lord. We can have the blessings of God in these days. And if the heathen rage, we just say, well, that's what heathen do. But I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm going to have my confidence in the Lord. May God help us to trust in him in these days. Let's pray, Lord. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for your word and the truth of it. We ask, Lord, that you would encourage us to help us during these days when trouble is on every side and problems everywhere. Lord, I just pray that you would help us to have confidence in you during these days. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Before we pray for our church folks and dismiss, uh, just remind you that tomorrow at noon, you can call in or join me on Facebook Live right at noon. 
I mean, at the stroke of noon, I pray and pray for our county and our area. It's a blessing to see you on there. And so if you've got time at noon, uh, join me uh, for 10 minutes of prayer. Sometimes it goes 15, but and let's pray for our, our, our area and pray for the people that are suffering. We've got a lot of people out of jobs and problems going on. We need to pray for them and have compassion for them and uh, pray for each other. And then tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, we have our, uh, our game night. Many of you have been on there at least and passed through and I encourage you to come and join, join me for that, uh, for some Bible trivia. And then on Tuesday night, Tuesday night men, I've, I've enjoyed the visits that we've had, the call-in visit. Join me at 7 o'clock. It was 6 o'clock two weeks ago to be 7 o'clock this time. At 7, we will meet together on Tuesday night. The men will. And then I'm excited about Wednesday night. We have our in-house service. We'll be meeting uh, in the auditorium. And I, I'm just reminding you, when you come in, you'll go through the bookstore going in, and you'll come through these doors going out. You have to go, go in and out. Just use those doors. We're kind of making them one way in and one way out. That'll help with traffic flow. We're going to get used to that. So when we go back on Sundays, that everything will work smoothly. So that'll start this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. And please join us and be a part of that service Wednesday. And then Thursday night, you can come out for that as well. It'll be open. Not going to run you off. We want you to come if you'd like to make the trip and be a part of the Bible study. But it'll also be broadcast online. And I appreciate those that have... Be sure when you get a chance, you see Brother Slate and let him know uh, if, if they've helped you and been a blessing. And even if you just got by one, let him know that. It's encouragement. It's hard. Brother Slate on Thursday night was preaching to an empty room. I was, in the, I was out here in the foyer and he was in the auditorium. I was here, but I was clear off in another room. It's, it's not easy to preach to an empty room. So, uh, But pray for him as he's delivering those messages and supporting on Thursday night. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. And we will have a gift for all the mothers. Um, I, I think it's going to be a little dab of hand sanitizer and a roll of toilet paper. We'll have that for you ladies. Uh, I know that will be a real blessing to you. And I'm just, I, I'm just kidding. I don't, uh, we'll have that for you. We'll have something different. It won't be that. All right. Uh, but we appreciate all the moms. And we want to honor the moms on Mother's Day. And I've already got the message working in my heart about uh, the moms that have gone through difficult days and dealt with things like we're dealing with and I will uh, deal with that next week and looking forward to that time. So be in prayer for all the things going on. Let's close in prayer. We will be dismissed tonight. And thank you so much for coming out. I know the time different was different, but many of you, were, I don't think anybody showed up at 6, so all of you that were coming remembered that. And uh, we appreciated uh, you being here tonight. So will you pray with me for our church folks tonight and to pray that the Lord will continue to protect. I'm not saying this is a magic charm, but so far the Lord has kept us safe and we want to rejoice in that, thank the Lord for that. But we want to pray. We want to be faithful in prayer and uh, ask the Lord to help us and to direct us in all things. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your blessings and the uh, word that we've been able to look at tonight. Uh, we pray for... Uh, our church family and Lord we love each one dearly and we just rejoice that you've allowed uh, my wife and I to minister here for these last eight years in Jefferson and Lord we rejoice in what you're doing in our 2020 it just seems like just a moment ago that we started this and we owed around $200,000 and now to see it nearly paid off we rejoice in that thank you for the faithfulness of people and giving Lord, I, I pray tonight that you would uh, protect our church family. Lord, we lift up these names here tonight and we thank you for your protection so far and we ask that you would continue. Lord, I pray for Jim Ann Anderson. And Lord, I pray for Phil and Phyllis Buckner. Lord, I lift up my family, Seth and Elizabeth and Joshua and Jonathan and Hannah and Grace and Lily and Philip. And Lord, we pray for Bill and Ann Carpenter and Bob and Aaron Chambliss and Bob and Ruby Cannell. We pray for John and Brenda Cornelius and Frank and Debbie Crisp and Stephen and Jennifer Deloach. Lord, we pray for Michael and Sharon and Jane Dietrich, Lord. And we pray for the Finleys, David and Sharon in the Carolinas, Lord, that you keep them safe. Protect them, Lord. 
as they're serving you. Lord, I pray for Jane Follis. And again, not just protection, but for this pinched nerve that she has. We pray for Larry and B.G. Foster. And we rejoice in their family and them being a part of our drive-in services. And Lord, I just ask that you protect them. We pray for Annie Grubbs and Edwina Henderson and Jean and Pam Henderson. And Lord, I pray for uh, Robert Hennigan. And Lord, we rejoice in Mary being here tonight. Lord, we pray that you protect her as well. And Lord, we pray for Sam and Ethel Henley and Carrie Howard and John and Jane Laster. And Lord, I just pray that you touch Jane's back today. And Lord, I pray for Corbin and Katie Manzella and their little baby that's supposed to be born this this month, Lord, in the middle of all this turmoil. Lord, I just ask that you give them a great delivery on that little child. Lord, we look forward to uh, meeting this little one and rejoicing over this little one. And I pray that you would give Katie and Corbin, uh, Corbin a wonderful delivery of this child on the right day and the right time. Lord, I pray for Geraldine Mason and Angel McDaniel and John and Dina and Jeffrey and Sarah McDaniel. Lord, I pray for Michael and Elizabeth McKee and James McTire and Brad Pace and Milton and Joyce Pace and Jim and Lucille Perry. Lord, I pray for Frank and Dahlia Rodriguez and Riley and Donna Shockler and Dennis and Cheryl Slayton and Caleb and Kelsey Stevens. Lord, I pray for their children, Aurora and Xander and Cade. And Lord, I pray for the Taylors and Brother Mel as he's heading on the road here this evening. And Lord, I pray that you keep him safe. Be with uh, Christine and Jacob and Luke and Laura and Grace. Keep them safe. Be with Brother Butch, Lord, in Maryland, trailer. And be with uh, Miss Joan Wells, Lord, over in the nursing home. Lord, we pray for your hand of protection on the nursing home here. Lord, that you keep this virus out. I know that uh, the older folks, they've been getting in these nursing homes and really wreaking havoc. And Lord, I pray for uh, Mrs. Slayton and the home that she works in, Lord, that you would put your protection upon uh, that one as well. And be with those that have contracted this. And Lord, I just pray that you keep them well. Lord, I pray for Kyle and Melinda Williams and their Benjamin and Elizabeth and their older children as well. Lord, we love these folks that we've prayed for tonight. And we rejoice that you've allowed our family to minister to them. But please keep a hand of protection on them. And bless them during these days. Lord, we love you. We pray that you bless our very busy week of ministry. The visits and the calls and the ministries that are going forward. Help us, Lord, to have the strength and the courage in these days to stand 